Hello everyone and welcome to week 9 of uh, CIS 115, Introduction to Programming and Logic. We're finishing up Module 4 this week and the exam for Module 4 is available uh, at the start of the week. You have all week to work through the exam. So let's talk a little bit about uh, scanners. Now everyone should have seen this video I put on YouTube that it's explaining to the folks in the face-to-face -face classes uh, that their classes have been moved online. Um, so this video is applicable to both the seated class that has been moved online as well as the folks that are in the online class. Uh, so um, there's a link to Calendly if you want to uh, set up a phone call or we can do something else uh, uh, in uh, Teams or in uh, Google Hangouts. So. Uh, before spring break, we had worked with all kinds of uh, loops, including the for loop, and I think we touched on while loops uh, some last week. So we need to talk about scanners because scanners are, uh, there are several questions on your homework about scanners, and there are several questions about scanners um, on your exam. So, first let's talk about these text files. If you'll notice here, number six on the checklist is providing you with three text files that you can use to work through the homework questions. And those text files, along with this scanner.py file, all need to be in the same folder as the Python program that you're using to test this out. Now that's one of the really nice things about Python and programming is that you can test this stuff um, out uh, and get Tani to pretty much tell you the answer if you know how to structure your program. So I'm going to go ahead and download the people.txt, the names.txt, and the data.txt files. And if you're using Chrome, you've got to be careful uh, when you right-click these because I think it'll just open them up uh, rather than actually saving them. I'm using Firefox, and Firefox actually just works a little bit better for downloading things. So I'm going to point to the people.txt and I'm going to right click and save that down. And I want to put that in this exact same folder as my Python program. So I've created myself a folder called scanners and files lecture. So that's where I'm going to put the people.txt file. And I'm going to save that down. I'm going to save the names.txt file down. These are all text files that are used uh, to test your homework and your exam questions out. I'm going to right click data.txt and same thing as before. Save that. Okay. Now we said we need the scanner.py file. Now this is just a Python module that somebody else wrote to kind of make working with text files a little bit easier. So I'm going to point to that scanner.py file, right click and save that link for that file. And I'm going to make sure that I get it in the right folder, scanners and files lecture. So there's my scanner.py. So I'm going to save that down. OK, uh, let's go ahead and grab one more file that I put out here. I've got a little text file that has the first 10 presidents of the United States in it, and I've created that for us to play with. So 
going to right click on presidents.txt and save that link down. You can see I'm in the scanners and files lecture folder that I created out on my flash drive. And I'm going to save that presidents.txt file down. Okay. So if we look, here's that folder now and everything that's in it. You can see I have the, uh, the scanner.py file, presidents, people, names, and data. So I've already create, uh, opened Tawny up and created a blank Python program called Testing Scanners. So we can pop over there and... Uh, check that out right here there's our testing scanners so the way this scanner uh, works is you have to create a scanner object and you have to import the scanner program in so um, let's let's go look at the uh, at the uh, material here and you can see um, where it's talking about the scanner and right here this is a link to our textbook number three so let's take a look at what they're talking about here in the textbook you notice it says a scanner is a reading subsystem that allows you to read white space white space means a space uh, delimited item in a text file. So if we had this I am a sentence in a text file a token would be I am a sentence. Okay so though we have four tokens in that line of that text file the white space that they're talking about is right here. There's white space between I and M. There's white space between M and A. And there's white space between A sentence. Okay. So uh, this is the way we can uh, set up a scanner. Now, right here where they're doing this, you'll notice that we need to first import that scanner py file we need to import that into our program so I'm going to copy that line I'm going to pop over to Tawny uh, that's not Tawny let's get to Tawny uh, right there paste that in so this is bringing the scanner.py file into our program all that code that's been written so that we can use it. The next thing that it says that we need to do here uh, in the scanners material is we need to create a scanner object. You notice they did that s equals scanner dot data. Now that's the name of a text file. So um, why don't we play with presidents here so you can see how that works. Okay, so I'll just copy this line so I don't have to um, don't have to type it all. And I'm going to paste that into my program. Okay, and if you recall, we have a presidents.txt file out there. So that's what I'm going to open up with my scanner. Okay. So here we brought scanner.py into our program. Here we created a scanner object name is S. Okay. And we can then tell this scanner object named S to go get something from the presidents.txt file. So let's do that. S.read token. Okay. That's the way we would call that. Now, this is actually going to return something to us. Okay. If you go back and look at the book, you see they have B, I, and so on. Okay. They're just getting something. Uh, the read token is what goes out here and grabs something and it returns it back to us. 
So why don't we just say a token is what we're going to uh, create a variable called a token. We're going to read that. And then just so you can see that we got something, I'm going to print a token. Now, the last thing that you have to do with the scanner object, once you've opened it, you need to close it. So I'm going to go ahead and put that line in my program. So this line closes the scanner. Bad things can happen if you open a scanner object or open a file and you forget to close it. So at this point, I've got my little program testing underscore scanners dot py out there and we're ready to save this and test it and you can see what I got back I got back George is what it printed now we haven't looked inside that file uh, but it's got the names of the first 10 presidents here's what's in that file George Washington John Adams Thomas Jefferson so on so you can see that it pulled the first token out of the file didn't it okay so we could actually make ourselves a loop to process every token in this file pretty easily now if I do another s dot read token after this one then uh, I would get Washington because this first one gets George the next one would get Washington and so on so if I wanted to just um, print these out with a while loop okay when we when there are no more tokens left in this presidents dot text file when there are none left this read token gives us uh, nothing it gives us an empty string so we could use that to our advantage okay to read everything in this file now the process of doing that with a while loop is you have to get something outside of your while loop kind of like the terminology that's used is called priming the pump any of you that have a well, if you've ever run it dry, sometimes uh, you have to pour water into the pump to get it to pump back again. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my while loop to process every single token in that text file. And the process is we have to read the first token. I'm putting a comment in my program. Okay, and then we have a while loop, and we can say while um, while a token um, is not equal to okay. So this is saying while a token is not equal to an empty string. So we can then inside of our while loop, if you remember everything that's part of a loop needs to be indented. So I've got this will print that a token that was just read. And then the last thing that we do inside the while loop is we need to repeat this process right here we get one outside of the loop we check it when we get into the loop and then we get another one okay so here's my loop right here it's going to whir down through that presidents.txt file and it's going to keep reading tokens until it gets an empty string and when it gets an empty string, it's going to stop. Okay, so let's let's try this out. I'll clear that, and I'm going to run it. And here's what we got out. 
George, Washington, John, Adams, Thomas, Jefferson. So you can see that it processed everything in that file. And this is your pattern that you use to read a, f a file with a, a scanner. Okay, We get something outside of the while loop to prime that pump. And then this is going to say, read the next token. Okay, And this is going to keep running as long as we have something in token. When we get an empty token back, we have hit the end of the file. Okay, So this process that I just coded for you is actually talked about uh, he, in the textbook where it talks about how to process a file. So if we um, if we look at uh, this part right here of our textbook, you can see using a scanner, uh, we go on down. Uh, eventually, I think it was actually up above where I was looking, the process to, to read from a file. Uh, well, I'm not finding it right this moment. It's probably, uh, I think I put it on the checklist. Let's just see. Uh, read individual items from text files. Here's, here's the process in the textbook. And if you'll notice, we kind of did this with the scanner object, didn't we? We opened the file. If you go back and look at what we were doing in Tani right here, okay, here's where we opened the file. Then it says, read the first item. Okay. There's where we read the first item. While the read was good, as long as the read is good, token uh, will have something in it. While the read is good, process the item. Process the item. Here's where we printed the, the item. And then read the next item. And that's what we did right here. And then you'll notice the last thing that it says to do is close the file. And that's what we did right here. So that's the process of using a scanner. Now let's actually apply that to some of the homework questions and see how this all works out. Okay, so... Here's my homework questions that it gave me. And just out of coincidence, the first question that it gives me is a true or false question. And it says, this code correctly counts the number of tokens in a file. Now, our patterns for uh, processing with loops, if you'll recall, there was a counting pattern and there was an accumulate pattern. The counting pattern bumps something by one each time. So they're asking us if this code correctly counts the number of tokens in a file. And let's just kind of talk through it first. So here we're bringing a scanner into our program. Remember, if you wanted to test this with Tawny, you would need to have downloaded scanner.py and it would need to be in the same place. Here, it creates a variable named file name and it sets it to people.txt. So if you were going to try this with Tani, you would need the people.txt file out there. Okay, so let's just check and make sure we've got these two things right here that we need in order for this to work. Okay, here's the scanner that we're importing and here's the people.txt file. Now, if you wanted to look inside this, you see it's got Sarah, Chase, Dylan, Logan, Joshua, Larry. Those were all folks in one of my classes in a seated class. I just took the folks' names off of the front two rows. Okay, so 
there's our people.txt, there's our scanner.txt, and we've got a program here that we could actually test this out with. So let's just do it right here. If I drag across all that code, copy it to the clipboard, and pop into Tawny right here, and I'll just paste it over the top of what we just did. Okay, well that paste didn't work out too well, so let me uh, delete everything and paste again. Okay, there's the code from Blackboard. It's going to open up people.txt right here. It sets count equal to zero. It reads the first token. You remember our pattern from our textbook said that we needed to read the first item from the file. Here's our while, and you can see that that's working the way it's supposed to. Here it's bumping count by one each time, and here it's reading the next token. So to me, it looks like this is right. How many tokens were in people.txt? We open it up again. You'll see there was Sarah, Chase, Dylan, Logan, Joshua, Larry. So there's six, right? So if we take this code and we actually run it, it should come back with six. If we wanted to see if it's working right, I'm going to add a print down here and print the count. Okay? So now... At the end of this, it's going to print a number and tell me how many tokens it counted. So here we go. You see what it came back with? Six. So I'm pretty confident this follows the pattern. It gives me the right number. Everybody agreed that that's a true statement. It correctly counts the number of tokens. Now here's a different one. And... See if you can tell if there's anything wrong with this just looking at it. First, it imports a scanner. It sets a file name. It creates a scanner object. It reads the first token. So far, everything I've said sounds good. It processes the tokens right here. Okay. It prints it. It prints the first token that it read right here. It's going to print it. And then it's going to read the token right there. Everything looks pretty good. And here at the end, it closes the scanner like we're supposed to. So do we have any criticisms of this? There is something wrong. Check it out right here is that s dot close indented it is so because s dot close is indented it is actually going to try to close the scanner each time through the loop so we should uh we probably won't get an error what will probably happen is we'll just get one token printed which in that people.txt file out here Let's see who the first one is. First one is Sarah. So I'm betting that if we paste this code into Tawny, instead of getting all those people, we're only going to get Sarah, and it's going to stop. So let's try it. Here's Tawny pasting it in. You notice that it's real apparent that this this is indented, so it's going to try to close our scanner each time through the loop. That's not what we want. Remember, we won't only want to close that scanner at the end of the program. So let's try running this. Well, I got Sarah, Chase, and Dylan. Okay. And it stopped. Okay. So uh, I guess probably what happened is it read the first one, it printed Sarah, it read the second one, which would be Chase, and it looped up here, and since uh, Token had 
chase in it. It wasn't empty. So it went down here and printed chase. And then it got the next token, which was uh, Dylan. And then it closed that. So that's why we got three. But obviously, this for this to be correct, it needs to look like that. Okay? And they had s.close indented like this. So, my criticism is that the scanner is closed at the wrong time. Let's see if there's anything like that. The scanner object is closed at the wrong time. All right. So, uh, here we've got uh, some sum the numbers from A to B. Those are uh, patterns that uh, are talked about. Uh, we talked about those before spring break. Before spring break. Okay. And you can go look at them. Okay. But um, just as a review, what would is there anything wrong with this attempt? Uh, to write a function that scan that uh, sums the numbers from A to B. Well, we are passing A and B into this sum function. Okay, we're setting the total equal to B with the count and the accumulate pattern. Total always gets set to zero, so that's a flag right there that something's wrong. Okay, total should be set to zero. Let's see if anything else is wrong. Here's a for loop, and it's telling our for loop to start at A, which is uh, good. We want to start at A and sum the numbers up uh, from A to B, including B. Well, this B right here tells our range statement to stop at 1 before B, so this would not include B. And then right here, they have a zero step. So our step is not correct either for our loop. We want it to bump by one each time through for I. So let's see if we can find a correct answer here. Step should be one, not zero. Total should start at no. That's not right. Okay. Range should, range should end at B plus 1. That's right, not B. Total should start at 0. That's about as close as we can get right there to a correct answer. Uh, so there are actually two things wrong, though, uh, but this is not correct because it says total should start at 1. We never start our total at 1. So this is as, as good of an answer as we can get right here. Let's see if we have any other scanner questions here. Yep, here's one. What criticism do we have of this scanner code? Well, let's talk through it. It's importing the scanner.py it's creating a file name, uh, file name variable dot people dot text. It creates the scanner object. It reads the first token. It's processing while the token's not equal to an empty string. It's printing the token, and it's reading the next token. Everything looks good. What did they forget to do? They forgot to do a s.close, right? Our scanner's name is s here. So we should have an s.close outside of our while loop. So our criticism is that the scanner object is not closed. All right, let's look at this one and see if everything's okay with this one. Do we have any criticisms of this code? We're creating a scanner object. We uh, imported scanner.py. We're reading the token. We've got a while loop to process it. We're printing the token. We're reading the next token, and we're closing it. 
All that looks pretty good to me. I think it's correct. You want to test it just to be sure. Remember, we downloaded the data.txt file. So we could come in here and we could paste that into Tani and we could run it and we should see everything that's in data.txt. And it's given me an error. And it's saying read token is not defined. Okay. So what's wrong? Remember, we created a scanner object named S. Okay. Right here, we should be saying s.readToken to call the readToken method of our scanner object named S. So they left this off. Okay. Now, just to show you that it will work, there's everything that's in data.txt. So, code's not correct. Good reason to test it, huh? Because we forgot that we should have s.readToken there. So, uh, the scanner's version of readToken is not called. That's right, because we didn't put an s.readToken in front. So, that's the criticism that we have of that code. One last scanner question, and then we'll stop talking about scanners here. Um, so this says, the true or false, this code correctly counts the number of tokens in the file. Remember with our pattern, count needs to be set to zero outside of the loop. Okay, here we're importing the scanner.py file. Here we're setting the file name. Here we're setting our count equal to zero. Here we're creating our scanner object named S. Here we're reading the first token outside of the loop, just like we're supposed to. Here we're processing while the token's not equal to empty string. We're bumping count. We're reading, oops, did you catch it? What's that say? S dot read line. What's it say up here? S dot read token. If you call the read line, it's going to get everything on that line. Now we're reading people.txt. So if here's the people.txt file, if we do a read line on this, we would get all these three folks into token. So our token would have Sarah space, Chase space, Dylan. So that's not going to correctly count because it's going to get, it's going to read this, then it's going to get this whole line. And we should, it, it will probably tell us that uh, it's going to get Sarah. So it'd have one. And then it would get Chase and Dylan. That would be two. And then it would get Logan, Joshua, and Larry. So we would have, probably it would have three in count when it should have six. Now if you want to test that out, just to see that it's not correctly counting those tokens, again, as long as you've got people.txt out there and scanner.py, you can test this out. So if I go into Tawny right here, Clear that out, paste it in, okay, and let's just see what it comes back with. Now, in order for us to know what count has in it, we're going to need to add something here to print it so that we could see what's in count at the end of the program. So here we go. Like I said, count has three in it, but there are six tokens in that file. So it's not correctly counting them. So we could answer false there confidently. Okay, so uh, that's what we can talk about one more, one more, just so you can see. What criticism do we have of this scanner question? Well, 
we're importing scanner like we're supposed to we're creating a file name variable we're opening a scanner to that file name right here okay we're reading the first token we've got our while loop we're printing the first token and we're closing the scanner do you see what's missing we are never getting the second or the next token so guess what this little while loop is going to do? It's going to go on forever. It'll run until the cows come home. We, we will never get out of this loop unless we stop the program. You want to see an endless loop on Linux? Linux is, it runs a whole lot faster than Windows. So this could wrap up really tight printing the, only the first token from people.txt. So let me see if I, hopefully I won't kill my video recording while I'm doing this. Here's our nice little endless loop program. Okay. Now, because we are never reading another token inside the while loop, there's no opportunity for token to ever become empty. So we have an endless loop that's going to take off here when I hit run. You ready? There it is. It's going on forever. Okay, I stopped it with the stop button here. <laughs> okay, but you can see just in that little length of time we printed Sarah off a lot. Okay, so to fix this program, really, we would need to have something like this going on. Okay, now that program's fixed because I added this and it would properly give us everybody in people. See, Sarah, Chase, Dylan, Logan, Joshua, Larry. Okay, but this is not in there in Blackboard. So our criticism would be what? The code's definitely not correct. No, the scanner's opened at the right time. The first record's not printed. No, it's printing. Uh, the token is only read once. Yes. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense that because we didn't have this token, uh, this read token inside the while loop, that we only read the token once. Okay. So that's where we'll stop with scanners. I'll do uh, another video or two talking about uh, some other things here in the chapter, but we've gone on long enough in this video. Uh, you'll notice that uh, it gives you some definitions here on the checklist, okay? And we're, I will put another video out there that describes how we could use the file pointer uh, to process files. Uh, and that will give you a little preview of what's coming in Module 5. Good luck with everything in the class. Stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, look for another video uh, a little later in the checklist. Take care.